Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today it is time for Bounty Talk. Something we haven't done in quite a while. In fact, I don't think I've touched a topic since I made the highest and lowest bounty lists. And oddly enough, those videos are not out of date yet, which is surprising, but very nice. But today I am less concerned with what we know and much more intrigued by what we don't. We've gotten pretty damn far into the world of One Piece to the point where we do know the bounties of most important and applicable characters. However, there are still a collective of question marks out there, characters who are undoubtedly worth an awful lot of berries that have yet to be revealed to us. So we're going to count down these unknown bounties and what's more fun is I'm going to attempt to do these 10 characters in order of lowest likely bounty to highest likely bounty and it's going to be fun, I think. But before we get into that, it is time for you to play Bounty Guesser, a very, very simple mini game. Basically, I'm going to give you an obscure character and a bounty number. It is then your job to guess whether that character's actual bounty is higher or lower than the number I've stated. And if you're wrong, then your punishment will be subscribing to the Grand Line Review, which will give you regular One Piece content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. And if you are right, then well, you live to play another day, but I will get you. And our character today is going to be Van Alga, and the number I am assigning him is 70 million berries. So please select whether you think Van Alga's bounty is higher or lower than 70 million berries. I'll give you a bit of time, three, two, one, and the answer is lower. Van Alga's officially logged bounty in the Vivia card data book is 64 million berries. So if you said higher, then welcome to the Grand Fleet. I hope you enjoy your stay. And if you said lower, well, you should subscribe anyway, because it's fun, I promise. But with that out of the way, let's get into some unknown bounty, starting with number 10, Jewelry Bonnie. Now this entry might be a bit confusing at first because we do know of a number assigned to Jewelry Bonnie, as during the Sabadi arc, she was introduced with a bounty of 140 million berries. The problem we have now is that the story has progressed a whole two years and Bonnie remains someone whose bounty has not been updated by Oda, which I find particularly intriguing because there is something very special and very fearsome about Bonnie, something that sent chills of terror into the molten justice of a certain Sakazuki. And after having escaped the grasp of the world government, it seems highly likely that they would have raised her value even minimally just to indicate their keenness to, you know, get her back under their control. But with that said, I really don't think she would have seen a huge jump and at most, she's probably worth somewhere in the 200 million range today. If she's very unlucky, it'll still be somewhere in the hundreds, but we don't know because I suppose that's the entire point of this list. And feel free to keep that in mind as we move on to number nine, who will be Shaki, the former pirate and current partner of Silver's Ray Lee. Shaki is very much a woman of keen interest in the fan base. In particular, she will generally be quite the popular choice when theories concerning the makeup of the Rocks pirates are constructed because her timeline sort of matches up to theirs, maybe it's, it's a bit tricky. But we do know for a fact that Shaki was indeed a prominent pirate, so much so that she was frequently chased by the hero of the Marines, Monkey D. Garp. Although this would have been before he became known as the hero of the Marines, but still a pretty legendary name. And it is not just your everyday pirate who catches the attention and more importantly, requires the skills of Mr. Garp. And while Shaki may not be a currently active pirate, it is almost certain that she would have been issued a bounty. What that number is though, that's a kind of a tough guess. I don't think she would have quite had the prominence of say a Luffy standout, but I do think that late 200 million to early 300 million sounds about right for Shaki. But that is admittedly with very little knowledge concerning her abilities or history. So take from that what you will, and I know that's not much. But let's move on to number eight, Mad Monk Urouge. So similarly to Bonnie, Urouge was introduced with a bounty. When we first met this smiling behemoth, he was stated to have a bounty of 108 million berries, thus allowing him to become the lowest cash valued member of the supernovas because even Zoro was worth more than a rouge. However, given that he and most of the other supernovas have been causing, you know, a bit of trouble in the old new world for the last two years, I find it nigh on impossible to believe that the world government have not assigned him a new number. We do know, for example, that it was a rouge who was responsible for defeating Charlotte Snack, a man who was worth 600 million berries. So that feat alone is surely worth some consideration here, especially considering that Prior to Luffy vs. Cracker, Arouge was the only member of the Supernovas who had taken down a commander level combatant. And as for what he should be worth right about now, well, I probably wouldn't go so far as to place him on par with Snack's bounty, especially if the world government have no knowledge of that conflict, but somewhere in the region of 500 million does sound about right to me. But now let's move on to someone truly unknown. Number seven, 
Golden Lion Shiki. One of the most confusing characters in the series because he is simultaneously canon and not canon. But basically the general rule is that anything that was mentioned in the manga, including chapter zero is canon. However, the events of Strong World are not. Strong World is irrelevant anyway though, because we are focused on the old era Shiki, the one who is said to be a rival of the pirate king, Goldie Roger. And in fact, at one point he even possessed an armada capable of initiating the Battle of Ed War. And we're talking a pretty massive fleet here. Very much equitable to say the scale of the Whitebeard pirates in the modern day, just perhaps lacking the individual firepower of their members. But furthermore, Shiki also launched an invasion of Marineford all on his own, taking both Sengoku and Garp on in combat. And while he did lose, this surely warrants a pretty serious bounty. And maybe this does seem absurd, but I have a hard time thinking about Canon Shiki and not seeing him having a bounty of at least 1 billion berries. And the only reason why that sounds a bit absurd is if you think of the events of Strong World, where Shiki was not particularly well presented and inevitably defeated by a pre-time Skip Luffy. But that is not Canon Shiki. Canon Shiki is a different beast altogether, especially in his prime. So I'm going to stick firm with that 1 billion number. Moving on though, we have number six, King of the Wildfire. And so this character is probably the sole reason why this may list go very out of date very quickly, but he is an unknown quantity. We know the bounties of Jack the Drought, Queen the Plague, and Kaido the, the Kaido guy. So what is the deal with King? Why are you still so hidden? Although, like I said, I don't expect this to remain secret for too long. Here's what we know though. King, Queen, and Jack. They seem to form a hierarchy of sorts. Granted, it is in name alone, but the bounties we have so far match up, with Jack being worth a billion berries and Queen being worth just over 1.3 billion, which is pretty ridiculously massive, much like Queen himself. But I do think it's a fairly safe bet to say that King would be worth more. That's the pattern that's been set up. So the question is, how big of a leap does he take? Being conservative, I would probably place him somewhere in the one. 1.4 to 1.5 billion mark. It wouldn't surprise me if he went as high as maybe 1.7, but I'm going to stick with the other estimate for now, which is just enough to give him a solid step above Queen. But I suppose the great thing about this pick is that we will find out fairly soon in the grand scheme of things, unlike number five, who will be Ben Beckman. Who am I? Ben Beckman. So I know we could probably say this about most of the key members of the Red Hair Pirates like Yasop and Lucky Roo, but Ben Beckman is a far higher order of concern, given that he is the first mate, which automatically makes me much more interested in him. As does the idea that he is a character capable of making someone like Kizaru think twice about engaging in combat. I'm really not sure if any other commander type character has ever had that effect on an Admiral. Marco certainly didn't, and Jack was pretty convincingly defeated by Fujitora, Sengoku, and Suru. So look, Ben Beckman as it stands is a pretty special boy. And as such, I would quite willingly place him in the area that I was hesitant to put King, perhaps around the 1.6 to 1.7 billion berry mark. I want to emphasize though, this is pretty much pure speculation because it is entirely based on his status within the Red Hair Pirates and that one interaction with Kizaru. His bounty could be much lower and it could also be much higher, but that's what we have for now. And as such, we are going to move on to number four. Kuzan, former Admiral Alkiji and someone who I did not initially think of for this list, but it does make quite a bit of sense. He is now no longer officially affiliated with the Marines, to the best of our knowledge anyway, and having aligned himself with the Blackbeard Pirates is quite a worrisome move for the world government. And as such, if he has been issued a bounty, I don't think it would be out of the question to place Kuzan around the two billion berry mark. And this isn't just taking raw power into consideration because Kuzan was an Admiral with intimate knowledge of the workings of the Marines and the world government. And as just a small example of that, that he was present for the genocide of Ohara. Things like that getting out into the general public could do some fairly incredible damage. So what this man knows is profoundly dangerous and he is applying that knowledge currently alongside an emperor of the sea. So that's one hell of a concern. So in the event that Kuzan really did leave the Marines and this isn't some grand ploy, there is no way he isn't being issued a bounty and that number is going to be pretty massive, but probably not quite as massive as our number three, Silver's Rayleigh. Oh, hey, that kind of rhymes. But the Dark King and former first mate of the Roger Pirates. And do you think three billion berry is too high a number? Maybe, but surely the late two billions at least. And that's because Rayleigh is a figure who very much transcends the comparatively petty squabbles that we find ourselves involved in in the modern day. This guy was the right hand man of the Pirate King. He's been to Laugh Tale, he knows how to get there. And much more importantly, he knows the true history of the world. In terms of living figures, there are very, very few people who the world government should show more concern for than this very man. And I do quite look forward 
forward to the day where we ascertain exactly how much of a threat they deemed him. But right now I do have to admit that I am much more interested in number two, which actually warrants a bit of a spoiler warning for those not caught up with Act Three of Wano, which right now definitely means anime only watches. So if you'd like to not be spoiled, then please do skip to number one by jumping to this time. But for everyone else, let us unveil the number two spot because it is going to be Rox D. Zebek. And we know so, so little about this man. However, what we do know is pretty earth shattering. Zebek was a man capable of commanding a crew of future emperors. The likes of Whitebeard, Big Mom, Kaido, and even Golden Lion Shiki, who was on this list earlier, each of them chose to submit to Zebek. And with that grand power, he brought the world to the brink of destruction with his wild ambition to rule over it. Only capable of being stopped through a combination of Garp and Roger, I don't see a scenario where Zebek is worth less than four billion berries. In fact, I would be quite tempted to push that number up into the five billions, of which there are currently only two known figures being Whitebeard and Roger. But if anything, Zebek feels like he could potentially be the most valuable bounty in the entire history of One Piece, because there has never been a figure capable of accomplishing what Zebek very, very nearly did. Not even our number one contender, who is Monkey D. Dragon. So this one shouldn't really be a surprise at all, given that Dragon is stated to be the most wanted man in the world, and for very good reason. He is leading an active and ever-growing effort designed directly to overthrow the world government. And since the world government are the ones who issue the bounties, Mr. Dragon is going to receive a pretty damn big one. And we do know more or less for a fact that his bounty will be over five billion berries. We just don't know by how much. It may very well be the case that he even surpasses the six billion mark. Perhaps he can do it, because in the eyes of the world government, there is no single entity more threatening than Dragon. Not even Roger in his prime, because at the very least, he was not focused on defeating their grasp on the planet. And as such, in the end, Dragon is the obvious and only choice for the number one unknown bounty in One Piece. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.